nations in my room, and we were not conscious of it. I first said three, and somebody corrected me, he says four. What were those four nations? They were a quarter dozen Malays, one nation. A quarter dozen Hindi Muslims from India, another nation. Then we had an Arab, another nation. And we had a Chinese Muslim, Brother Sikandar, who has been working so hard to organize this meeting. Another nation, four nations. Allah Ta'ala makes us to come together five times a day, every day of the year. He brings us together in the worship of the one true God. We are made to stand shoulder to shoulder. No gaps left between one individual and another. Because our Nabi Karim sallallahu he said that when you stand up for prayer, you must not leave gaps between you and your brother for the devil to get in. What devil? Anybody seen the devil? You know, usually we see in religious pictures, the devil is portrayed with horn, sharp ears, a tail with a barbed hook, with a ruddy complexion. Anybody seen one like that? No. The devil that our Nabi Karim sallam, was speaking about was not the one we see in the art galleries, but he was talking about ourselves. The devil of racism. I am Malay, this man is a Chinese. I am rich, he is poor. That kind of a devil is not allowed to come in between our brothers, so we stand shoulder to shoulder, packed, no gaps left between one devotee and another. Then once, twice a year, we are made to go to the Eidgah, a bigger gathering. On Fridays we gather at the, for Juma in the big, big masjids. And again, during the Eidain, I don't know whether we have the practice here in Malaysia, but in my country we are trying to revive it. Our Nabi Karim sallallahu had said that when the Eidains come, the two Eids, one after Ramadan and the other Eid al-Adha, the Eid of sacrifice, we are ought to go out in the open fields, like this one here, and every other open field that you can think of, go for your Salat, you will eat there. And our Nabi Karim sallallahu he also said that when you go for the Eidain, take the women and children with you. And he said something more than that. He said, even menstruating women, ask your alims. He said, even menstruating women, you know in the house of Islam, menstruating women do not offer salat. Then what do you do with them? Why? Why give them this extra trouble of gathering them in open places like this? There is a psychology. The psychology behind it is this. That if the, even the menstruating woman, she comes along, she brings her little ones also with. Can you imagine? The husband, the wife, the little one, the big one, and all the children, including herself, the whole, all are there. And it creates an impression in any situation, like in my country. When we do that, we know in the small towns, the people come to see, so what, so many Muslims? As a whole, in the country, we are less than 2%. Less than 2%. For every 100 people, there are only about two Muslims. For every 100, there are only two Muslims. But the impression is that so many Muslims, it boosts the morale of the Muslims and it terrifies the enemies of Islam. We didn't know that there were so many Muslims in the Cape. There are so many Muslims in Durban. There are so many Muslims in Johannesburg. So it's a psychological factor. Our Nabi Karim knew this, this secret of the psychology that go and create this bond. وَاَقْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Allah tells us, and get together, hold fast, all of you together. And don't be divided among yourselves. Get together. Then once in a lifetime, if one can afford, we are told to go for Hajj. If you can afford. If you can fulfill certain requirements. One is financial, and the other is other social obligations. You may have the money, and you have the health to take that long journey, but you have a grown-up daughter in the house, ready for marriage, and she is unmarried. What does Islam say? It says, get her married first. 
Allah can wait. Get her married first. You have the money, but you're owing somebody. You are in debt. He said, pay your debt first. Allah can wait. Allah is not needed. He doesn't need your hajj. He does not need your umrah. Get the girls married first because left alone at home, the mother is there, but is not the same as the father being there. So, once in a lifetime, you gather together and you discover Muslims from all over the world, all sh shades of color. And you realize that I didn't know, you would say, I would say, and meet the Chinese Muslims. I said, what, Muslims from China? Chinese Muslims? Said, yes, there are more than 50 million Chinese Muslims. We didn't know that. Then we find that there, Tamil Muslims, people from Tamil Nadu, from the south of India. In my country, almost 100% of the Tamils from South India are all Hindus. They are now rapidly getting Christianized, but they are all Hindus. So to us, every Tamil is a Hindu. Every Tamil is a Hindu. But now when we go for Hajj, we find that there are Tamil Muslims speaking the Tamil language and lecturing in the Tamil language. Unknown to us. Men from Ethiopia, men from Nigeria, men from Ghana, Muslims, Muslims from Turkey with blonde hair and blue eyes, Muslims, Muslims from Malaysia, from Indonesia. Alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala has given us a system of how we can be united in a brotherhood of faith. We are to make use of this and spread this brotherhood. It is the bounden duty of every Muslim, man, woman and child, that we read the Quran, we understand it and we share it with everybody around. This is the bounden duty. Allah Ta'ala will question us on the Day of Judgment. It is the trust which He has given us. And if we do not fulfill the trust, He warns us in the Holy Quran. He says, Wa in that if you do not carry out your duties and obligations which Allah has imposed upon you for being the khaira ummah and the best of people we are, Allah tells us, the best of people what makes us the best of people? Ah, I know why because we are Malays no, nothing to do with you being Malay or we are Arabs nothing to do with that or we are Turks or we are Afghans, Pathans Pakistanis, Bangladesh has nothing to do with that. What makes us the best of people? Allah says, Ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna anil munkar. Because you enjoy what is right and you forbid what is wrong. Wa tu'minuna billah and you believe in Allah. These are your qualifications. You are the best of people. When Allah gives you this high and noble status, this high and noble status of being the best of people, it imposes certain responsibilities. There is no honor, no status without responsibility. You mean to say Allah makes us the best of people without responsibility? No. Responsibility is that you share this deen with other 